Right. Yeah, you you Just should be home. In your room yeah. On your phone. Yeah. So again, if you go on quarantine, it's fine. It is what it is. It's the school's policy um, to keep you safe, um, to rest at home, but also to keep others safe, so we're not spreading this to everybody. Um, but even though you're on quarantine, you still got to do your work. That's why I'm kind of, as it goes, switching everything to be posted to classroom um, so that basically I'm assuming that at least one of my students is going to be on quarantine. So I got to make everything at least available on classroom so that they could do it, right? So again, if you go on quarantine, you would have to be checking in, you know, every other day to classroom, ideally every day, just to see if something's new, but see what your assignments are and get it due. I don't want you to fall behind if you go on quarantine. I don't want you to, you know, get stuck in a hole that makes it really difficult to get out of. The other big thing, um, as a whole, this class, we're unit 2.2, right? We're coming to an end of that. Today, I'm going to introduce 2.2.7. Um, it's a partner mini project. It's not a big deal, um, but it, it's a couple different things you're going to do. This is going to be due. My other class, if you work hard, some of them were almost done. Otherwise, this will probably go through the next class, which for you guys would be the last class that we have, right? I have you today, and I'd have you Monday, and then we got break. What that means and what you should be thinking about is my grading policy is late work is full credit anytime during the unit. You could turn in any of our 2.2 assignments right now for full points, even though it might be three weeks late, which is crazy. Luke, please stop. Um, but when the unit ends, that is your deadline. That's the cutoff point. I don't wanna, I don't mean to be repeating myself, but I need everyone to be crystal clear. All right, there's gonna be no excuses. You all know my policy. You've known for weeks, but I'm reminding you, hey, that deadline's coming up. Basically, with our next class, the last class before you go for Thanksgiving break, that will be your deadline for any 2.2 assignment, okay? At that point, by the end of that class period, if you don't have any of your 2.2 assignments, they're going to be stuck at a zero. Right? I do not want that. I do not want to give you zeros. Right? I'm not a cruel person. However, I give you what you earn. If you don't do any work, the grade you earn is a zero. You, you know the deadline. You know my grading policy. I think it's very fair. And I, and I think you guys agreed when I introduced, I kind of changed my policy to make it better for both of us. But I just need to express, if you got missing work, get it done. Don't take a zero and let your grades suffer because of it. All right? Um, there's a bigger picture of, like, if you didn't do so hot quarter one, and right now in quarter two, you're also not doing so hot, if you fail a semester, you do not get any credit. You'll do a semester's worth of work, or maybe half the work because you failed, but you won't get any credit for it. It'll be for nothing. So some of you might need to buckle down. The quarters are like the S1 on power school. Quarter, Q1, we finish. We're in Q2. Q1 and Q2 add up to be S1, semester one. And that's going to be our final grade is S1, right? If you fail S1, the total score from your Q1 grade and Q2, if you fail that S1 grade, you do not get credit for my class. You get no credit, nothing. Then you might have to go to credit recovery uh, over break, uh, credit recovery in the summer. Um, I'm pretty sure you have to pay for credit recovery yeah, or summer do. school. Yeah, that, that's not good, right? Don't, don't go down that path. $75 is it really yeah, yeah. Don't, don't be wasting your money on that get your work done now do it right the first time pass and get your credits right a lot of you guys it's coming down to you know we got like four weeks left are for these, semester are one these passing grades for this S1 yeah like whatever an F I, I can't remember what's the cutoff I never know them I think I think it is F is it like 
59% or 60% yeah, is the cutoff. Something like that. Something yeah. around, along those lines, right? You're, I think it's your D minus and above, you will get some credit. If you got less than that, you don't get anything. So you really got to be thinking long term, right? Um, so um, I don't like to have the grade talk, but it, it's kind of coming down the end of the semester or some of you got to need to look at things a little more realistically and see what what's coming down, um, what are some of the consequences that are going to ca happen because we're getting to that no um, end of semester. Yeah, no, no game, no social yeah you, you, your parents are probably not going to be happy if you did a semester's worth of work and didn't get any credit for it. So again, I just want to remind you again about our unit coming up. Get your missing work in, right? Just do it. Um, work hard. Use this class time to get stuff done. I'm right here. If you do an assignment, you're stuck. Ask me. I can help you, and then you can keep going and finish it faster, right? Use this time wisely. Okay. So I want to transition again. I want to get started with today um, and get you on the right path for kind of what we're doing today, um, but also to give you guys more time to work. So, on Classroom, the assignment I just, it just posted. Huh? It'll be partners, so two people. So it's going to be, you're going to have to pick one other person. I'm, I'm going to explain this. So is everybody paying attention to me? I need your guys' focus. Gabriel, I need you to be with me. Gabriel. Gabriel. Are you with me? I'm going to introduce what we need to do today, okay? I need everyone to pay attention so I can explain it once and then turn you loose and I'll help you afterwards. Today, this is most likely the last thing we'll do in Unit 2.2. It's 2.2.7. Basically, in a nutshell, we're going to do a functional analysis. Right, the inputs, outputs, how does this assembly work for a staple remover? Um, I have one that I can kind of pass around and let you guys use. Yeah. Right, you guys seen these? Looks like a kind of like a Pac-Man on you know rabid Pac-Man. Right? That's what I think of like the That's teeth and staple remover. Oh. Right? You know, you grab the staple and rip it out. So what we're going to do, a functional analysis. You guys have done this. The document, it'll ring a bell. It's the same thing you've done, but we're going to do it on the staple remover. The other thing we're going to do is a disassembly chart. Now, you can't take this apart because they have rivets. Those are permanent fasteners. If you take it apart, you broke it, right? So we can't take these apart. But PLTW has a video of someone actually taking the whole thing apart, right? They break it, but at least you can see here's all the different parts that make up this product, right? So you're going to do the disassembly chart. We have done that same thing. It's the same document. It'll, it'll look familiar, but you're going to identify all the parts, you know, the mass of it, dimensions, material. I want to remind you, you don't have this in person, right? If you wanted to, you could grab a ruler and measure this one. Otherwise, you got to give me a reasonable estimate, right? The length of this plastic grip, don't tell me it's a foot long. That's completely unrealistic, right? If you tell me, oh, you know, two inches, yeah, just ballpark it, right? I don't need exact measurements. I get that we can't have hands-on to actually measure the way we should do if we completed this activity. But, you know, I don't have a bunch of these. The coffee maker, I didn't have like 20 coffee makers lying around for you guys to rip open. So it's kind of a bummer, but it, it's the way we have to do it. Um, and then same thing for virtual students so that they can complete this with us. Um, so those are the two major things we're doing. You've done them before, but you're doing a new product now. There's a new piece that we're adding to this assignment. If you notice, good grief. It's... Uh, Where's my TV? There it is. There we 
There we go. Do you notice? Design for manufacturability and assembly. This is the other element that we're going to add to what we already know how to do. So on PLTW, I need you guys to read that intro material. It's not long. It's introducing this idea of considering how something's manufactured and how something's assembled. So with the product disassembly, you're going to add an element of it's a complexity factor. Again, in PLTW, it explains what that is and how to calculate it. It's not too hard. It looks confusing, but it's not. So that's another piece for the disassembly chart. Um, you're going to use that to calculate basically how complex is this as a product. Not very. Not very? It's like a hinge and basically sharp edges. True, true. This is a pretty simple object. But the point is something could also always be improved. So your goal is to figure out basically how complex it is. You could do the complexity factor. It's like a number to show you like a scale for how complex it is. Your final piece for this project or assignment is you got to come up with a redesign that makes this better. Like make one? You're not going to make it an on shape. You will not make a 3D model. You're going to brainstorm and create a sketch. You're just going to sketch like this is my improved design for the jaw style staple remover. You can't just make it different. That completely misses the point of this activity. Again, when you read the instructions, it, that's what it's telling you, but a lot of you guys really struggle to read the instructions. So I'm reminding you, when you make your redesign at the very end, you need to think about how can I make this better so that it's easier to manufacture or easier to put together. A lot of times that means reducing the number of parts. If you have less parts, easier to put together less things to make. You could simplify the part. You're like, this is kind of a complex part. You know, if I make it more geometric, it'd be easier to produce this, and it'd be easier then to manufacture. Or, if I think of a new, you know, hinge or something, I'm like, oh, I know a better way that this could be assembled that'd be faster. That's what you need to be thinking about when you do your redesign. Doesn't have to be crazy. You also have to redesign this. You don't get to make a brand new staple remover. That could be another project. You got to improve this. Make at least one major change to this thing so that it's simpler, easier to manufacture, or easier to put together. All right, I want to emphasize that's the goal for that last part of this activity. You do your redesign. I just need a sketch Right? Give me a fairly detailed sketch so I can see what's going on. And you also need to write, let me see, there we go. You also need to write a mini paragraph on the bottom of your sketch and tell me what you changed and why it's better. Right? We removed this part because it wasn't necessary. Therefore, there's less parts and it's easier to make. Or we combined these parts so that it's easier to make and there's less total parts. Right? you got to give me a mini paragraph so that you explain to me what this design is and why it's better. Okay? Pardon this interruption, students and staff. I do want to announce that the ASVAB test has been canceled for today. Uh, we will turn the bells back on. The ASVAB test has been canceled. Those of you scheduled to take that ASVAB test, you may head to your first block class. Thank you. That strikes me as very odd. I wonder if they're going to... It was supposed to start like now. Maybe we were doing drills with no, they would have planned that. Like, they've known the ASVAB was to unless, unless they're kicking us off. And they would have told the teachers. That'd be crazy. That's I don't know. They, that's what they do to Eastbrook. In the middle of the day, they just kicked us out. Really? Yeah, last year. Wow. They just kicked us out for the day. For COVID stuff? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, regardless, um, that's kind of all I want to explain. Um, I need to emphasize, your process should always be, okay, go to classroom read my simplified instructions, right? Figure out, okay, okay, this is what I need to do. This is what I'm going to have to turn in. A lot of you guys miss this a lot. I summarize, you need to turn in this, this, and this. That's what you need to attach to your assignment. Then, 
my instructions told you, go to PLTW. Right? You need to go step by step for 3 through 10. Um, one of them asks for an isometric sketch of this at the beginning. I don't need that. Um, I only need the sketch of the redesign at the very end. Um, you're working in partners, so one person is going to submit your group's project. Right? So you would submit it and say, my partner was so-and-so, and I'm going to give you both credit. Um, when you create your sketch, you need to do it in your engineering notebook. Right? One of you needs your engineering notebook and put your sketch in there. When you submit it, just take a picture of it, right? Take a picture of your work and the sketch and the explanation. Put that on Classroom. Alright? So I'm done talking for now. Any questions? Any questions of what I'm expecting or what we're doing today? Can we do this solo? Yes, that is something. If you do this, if you want to do this by yourself, by all means, you can. Um, just know you're responsible to do everything. It's not that bad. It's very reasonable to do this by yourself. So if you want to do this by yourself, go out by all means. Um, you just got to do all three by yourself um, and submit it to classroom. Again, if you do work with a partner, whoever is submitting it has to comment, my partner was so-and-so. If you don't do that, only you will get credit, and you'll basically be screwing your partner over because they don't get any points. Please don't do that. I had a lot of group projects last week, but they didn't tell me who their partners were. Their partners were pissed when they came to the next class. We're like, why do I have a zero? I was like, well, you didn't turn anything in. Well, it's because their partner forgot to put their name down. All right? So again, for those of you that weren't here, we're doing 227. Um, all the instruction on classroom in my PLTW, you should do it with a partner. If you want to do it by yourself, you can. Just know you've got to complete, turn in everything yourself. Um, and I also want to remind you that weren't here, this will be the last thing for Unit 2.2. We will work on it today and have it due the end of next class, which for you guys is Monday. For White Day, it's on Monday. Um, that would be the end of Unit 2.2. That means all your missing work for 2.2 is due basically before you go to Thanksgiving break. So the end of next class. Well, I need you guys that you weren't here. I took some time to emphasize, like, hey, that's a reality. That's coming up. Get your missing work in so it doesn't get stuck at a zero. Okay? All right. I'm sorry for talking so much. Any, I want to make sure everyone's on the same page. Any other questions? Okay, I'm, I'm going to be here all day, of course, <laughs> um, walking around to help you guys. So if you got any questions on this or other missing work, give me a holler, right? Call me over and I want to help you get done with stuff um, and get stuff turned in. Uh, again, students, if you are on quarantine, you're, you know, essentially a virtual student right now. Um, everything I'm posting to Classroom, so you can see this video the same as the other students, um, Everything is still accessible all through Google Classroom. Um, you're going to submit everything via Google Classroom. Um, and you have the same deadlines as if, as if you were in person, just like normal. So same thing if you're on quarantine. Your late work, right, all your missing work for 2.2, it's due before you leave for Thanksgiving break. Um, you don't kind of get a pass just because you're on quarantine. Um, and this assignment, it's due the same time as if you were here. So I just want to clarify that that's the case. Um, again, if you have questions while you're virtual or on quarantine, email me. Let me know. You've got to let me know that you need help in order for me to help you. All right? So, again, any other questions, let me know or email me.